I'd like to welcome everybody to the Town of Southbridge Public Hearing Tax Classification. Call the meeting to order. I'd like to turn it over at this time uh, to Manny Silva. Um, we're going to welcome welcome the to town to the tax classification public hearing. The purpose of this hearing is pursuant to Chapter 40, Section 56, on the adoption of the residential factor for tax purposes and the adoption of the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real, of real and prop, personal property. Any persons wishing to speak will be given an opportunity to be heard. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Manny Silva, the principal interim assessor. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to have uh, Jack, if he could come up, because somehow it's not, it's not uh, clicking onto that. It's just so. As we go through it, like this, just, just. Jack set it up, so he's the. I set it up. Somebody fooled around with it. Yeah, I guess it's just not going. Again, uh, good evening. I'm Andy Silva, the interim uh, assessor, um, and the, the board has uh, developed some values. We actually submitted them to the Department of Revenue. All our values are uh, uh, certified, um, and, and we're good to go. Now we just have to uh, present the um, council with some of the options that you that you have before you. You actually have three options. You have an option of um, splitting the tax rate between residential and commercial and developing a minimal residential factor. The minimal residential factor will be the least amount that you could actually ta tax residents. And uh, it's calculated to be approximately 88.28%. So that's, that's one of the issues. And you can, you can actually um, defer or switch between rates, uh, anywhere 10%, even 1% increments, if you'd like to do a smaller amount. But so these illustrations will show you what happens when you um, actually decide to go to full uh, residential factor, and then you can just uh, figure most of them as we go on. The second one would be the residential exemption. Now, that exemption will... Um, actually shift some of the burden from the higher end homes to, and um, give uh, some reduction in taxes to the lower homes. Uh, it stays solely within the residential, doesn't affect commercial, just the residential. And then there's a third option, which is the small commercial exemption, and that's 10% that you can actually shift within the commercial itself only that will uh, give the, um, any commercial property that's under $1 million and has 10 employees or less, they would get a benefit of 10% um, in, in savings on their taxes. Now, it's important to understand that that there applies to the, re uh, to the actual real estate and not to the property owner. So the, and so the owner would actually, I should say, the owner would actually get the benefit, not the business, if the business is um, renting and it's not theirs. And then you, there is another option for the uh, open space, which we do not have or you do not have in this community. There is no open space, so you have no decision to make there. some of the pretty pictures that you have around town and also um, explanation of um, the 
rates that, that, that uh, can apply. The, um, let me see here, hold on. Personal property. Now, personal property is, uh, is another t tax that um, is uh, used and is taxed for communities. Uh, and that's everything that um, any company has, whether it be a computer, dentist chairs, office desks, all of that. Um, and there's different criteria for, the, for these uh, taxes, whether you're incorporated, um, LLCs, and uh, just, just strictly individuals. They get taxed on pencils if you really want to go down that far, which is ludicrous. But. Here's the uh, breakdown, and you can see by this little graph here uh, that the residential obviously is, is the big uh, portion of the tax revenues that we collect. And then the, the others are, are small. And here's what happened this year. This year we had a significant uh, value increase to residences. Um, last year, the average single family home was $245,000. And to this year, it went up to $306,000 for the average home. Now, the, this year explains what uh, growth is. And growth is anything that, any new homes, any new um, additions, um, any uh, new subdivisions. Uh, anything that the community grew by, it actually allows you to um, increase your levy limit by the amount of taxes that you're collecting for these, these new uh, developments, new uh, properties and whatnot. This here is uh, the uh, budget that the town has passed. The second line would be the um, total estimated receipts that the town will be collecting and leaving you with a tax levy of, and actually that's a tax levy that the town must uh, collect to um, run the community. This chart here is um, how the levy limit is actually um, calculated. Uh, this is strictly done by the uh, Department of Revenue. They uh, issue this out. They uh, um, check our uh, growth numbers. We have to submit a lengthy list of, of growth, and they give us what they allow for our levy to grow up to. And this is an important number because we can only tax up to 2.5%. So as this number goes up, that's what we can go up to, and that's it, no more. So if you, if you can see there that uh, this year the, the community had $208,294 in, in growth, which was added to the um, levy limit from last year, as well as the allowable 2.5%. And then there's the debt exclusions that the community had which uh, the um, maximum allowed uh, levy is $27,013,000. So we get to the splits. A single tax, uh, tax rate, obviously everybody pays an equal amount based on the devaluation of their property, their businesses, everything. Everybody gets, a, gets the same thing. Shifting um, rates would uh, put more burden on the uh, CIPs, which is the commercial, industrial, personal property classes. And here's the breakdown that uh, it's virtually the same. In fact, actually, the uh, residential went up a very small amount compared to the commercial. So that's, that's where, where uh, you have approximately 19% of your value is, is commercial, industrial, and personal property. <clears throat> well, you see the, uh, the uh, shifts are communities that are up in the 30, 40 percent because once you shift, you, you, don't, you don't really uh, impact uh, these properties as much. Mm -hmm. 
And then with, uh, within the, this one here will show you within the commercial industrial actually which percentages there are for industrial, personal, and commercial. So by calculating the, the um, tax rate recap, all the uh, funds that we're collecting, all the um, uh, state revenues that are supplying, um, we have come up with the uh, approximately 25 million six is what we um, estimate is needed for the community. And um, by doing this, the total valuation is 1.6. We calculate and divide, and the tax rate is actually coming down to 26, uh, 26, 2526 per thousand. Last year was, uh, we had 1884. 1584, jeez. And here's the, uh, here's the average, what happens. Single family home, where the um, values went, and what the rate is, what the rate was. In, in actuality, there's gonna be an increase of $159.79 to the average single family home. I know that, um, it looks like the tax rate went down and people usually think that your taxes are going to uh, decrease. That doesn't really happen in this day and age. Expenses go up and, and so on and so forth. So it's just an adjustment, it's just a calculation that happens. These are the values. Sorry that's small, but working with this thing is tough. Um, yeah. The community went up to 1,682,258,286. Um, these are just uh, calculations that, that uh, the Department of Revenue has uh, on their um, uh, gateway system. And there's, there's different things you can put in there. In fact, there's some, some communities are allowed to go up to 175. I believe Boston is probably the only one that does it at this point. So they, there's different calculations that you can put. This just shows you how to do it and how to go about doing it, which is very cumbersome. But here's, here's what happens with uh, developing the minimum residential factor. So, um, the minimum residential factor, if you were to shift um, the full one, uh, 150 to the commercial, the factor is, as I said before, is 80, 0.8828 approximately. And here's what the tax uh, would do. If you, were to, uh, if you were to do that, the residential tax rate would come down to 1346. However, the commercial industrial would go up to 2289. And that's at 88. Certainly can do it at 95, 90, and you can see the rates there uh, accordingly, how they work. This illustration will show you that um, at the average single family home, if you were to stay the same, the taxes are 4,000. 669.56 for both or for all four classes. Now, however, if you switch to um, 88, the taxes would uh, um, come down considerably for the residential home. They would benefit a $547 um, reduction in the taxes. However, the commercial would go up 2,334 for a $306,000 value only. And then the bottom there, I did it also at 500,000 to see what happens. Residents would get $890 with the commercial properties for that amount of uh, value would increase $3,800. And then in the bottom there just shows you different, uh, different illustrations of uh, different um, tax rates that you could do at 10% uh, increments. Open space, obviously, you um, did not um, adopt a, an open space discount, so uh, there is no decision to make there. 
Now, the, the small commercial, as, we, as I said before, um, it's, uh, you have to get the labor um, department to send you a uh, noti uh, notice of all properties that have less than 10 uh, employees. You've got to look at it, and then we have to uh, find out which ones are $1 million or less and determine which ones qualify. You have to add them up. I just did a, a, a quick uh, illustration of, say, 25 parcels that would qualify and what would happen. So you'd have to take the value out and divide it out, and you'd, again, you would develop a, a different rate. And here's the impact. It's at uh, $400,000 and $800,000. Um, for instance, uh, $800,000, uh, you have uh, approximately $2,000 in difference between shifting the 10% to the lower end to the higher, higher end of, of properties in town. Also, the residential exemption. Now, that... Um, a couple of years ago, they switched to you can actually go up to 35 percent, switching um, from the low end. I mean, from the high end to the lower end. Uh, and uh, typically, there's uh, 10 percent. Some communities have done it, not many. Again, it's it's a it's a mechanism where you can give the uh, lower end uh, properties and uh, cost of living really uh, people that are uh, not as fortunate to, to um, have expensive properties, and we'd uh, have the higher-end properties pay for the difference that these properties would, uh, would uh, save. These are illustrations here of, uh, of approximately what, what happens to the tax rate and what happens at certain values and how much savings they get at certain values. Um, mine is even smaller than the one up there, but... So before you, that's, that's the gist of it, what the decision of the board is um, that they have before them. And uh, if there's any questions, certainly we can at least try to answer. Are there any questions at this time? Yes, Council Mancati. Thank you. Uh, I just have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, I've always wondered how you assess the value of property in Southbridge. Uh, for example, my, my own house, I live up on Maria Avenue, and my house last year was valued at 229.5. This year it's valued at 309.5, which is an 11% increase. Now, I've done nothing to my house to improve it whatsoever. No one from the assessor's office has come to my house to take a look at my house to see if I've done anything to it. So. An 11 percent increase, and yet I did nothing to the house. It makes me wonder how do you come up with assessed values like that. Furthermore, I was looking at some examples of some commercial properties in town. For example, the Fair Plaza. In 2022, it was purchased for $12.6 million, and yet today it's valued at $11.3 million. So that's a, what, something like a 10 percent less than what it was purchased at. So that's an, a clear, precise example of something that, if you're basing it on sales, this is something that was sold at 12.6 million, but yet is worth less today than it was when it, when it was purchased. Another example is the Southbridge Hotel and Conference Center. Uh, in 2021, it was valued at 31 million. 2023, it was valued at 21 million. Today, it's valued at 20.9 million. That's a 32.5% decrease in the value of the hotel and conference center. So I've done no major improvements to my home. I see that the, some of these commercial properties, they do a lot of improvements there. They have a lot of things going on. They're always full. There's a lot of conferences going on. Uh, there's a police training academy over at the hotel. So again, my question is, how do you assess the value of property in Southbridge when my home, which I've done nothing to it, has gone up, and these other commercial properties, their value have, have come down? Well, there's, there's quite, a, quite a few questions uh, that you have, actually. But um, going to, to value of homes, 
we value homes based on what's happened in the current market, and we have to value them. That's, that's the way the legislation is written. If you remember Proposition 81, uh, what was it? Proposition 88, eight, five, something like that? Way back in the 80s, um, passed, mandated that we assess properties as close to, as possible to 100%. Now, individual properties are not looked at each and every year because that would be physically impossible. The community would never afford to, to get that all done. So what you do is you look at typical homes, what's happening to um, uh, typical homes, let's say uh, um, ranches, capes, uh, what's happening in, in colonials. And we analyze actually by a lot, a lot of factors. And we try to, to get as close as possible to what homes are and do comparables. So we have an, 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 a system where we put in the, the sales. We analyzed probably two to 300 sales for the past two years. And where's the sales in rel relation to the assessed value? Now your assessed value, um, what it looks like, probably went down um, to in the, I don't know, I want to say probably 80% of market value. The Department of Revenue does not allow us to be under 10% or above 110%. We have to be with it somewhere within that range. And, and the assessors try to be a, few, a couple points only be, uh, away from that. So once you get that, you plug in what your values are, and you, you determine what your, your um, costs would be for certain things. Plug these costs in, and the computer will generate a value and, and get us as close as possible. So no, not necessarily will they go to your house and nothing's been done. However, that's not always what happens. I mean, you probably have some homes that are, haven't been lived in or vacant for 10, 15 years. That value still went up, even though they're probably even less, uh, less uh, upkeep, uh, the upkeep is even less. But it's just the value that you're going to get on the market as of January 1st, 2023. What is that value? And as you know, Everybody knows. They've just gotten crazy, these values. Every community, everywhere. And if you go, if you go towards the Boston area, it's even worse. But it doesn't just, work for commercial property? No, the commercial properties, that's a whole other animal. Commercial properties, yes, we do it based on, on uh, um, comparisons. However, most of commercial properties are, is done on an income base. It's, it's based on what the income approach to value is. So it's what a typical um, warehouse or a typical storefront typical will, will bring on the market. And it's basically done on rents. So in other words, if you, can, if you have a piece of property that can generate a certain amount of money, and then, then their uh, investor's going to come in and say, oh, this property is generating a lot of money. I'm going to pay a lot for it. And the others might not be as, as, as uh, valuable. So that's what happens. And yes, uh, certain properties become less um, valued. For instance, you take, you take right now, as assessors, there's a problem with, with big warehousing, big store. Nobody wants a big store anymore. So f to market those, it's, it's difficult. So now you look at their value, they have, they have vacancy losses, they have all kinds of things that you have to uh, put into your calculations and the value will, will come down, unfortunately. Right. Well, I was pointing out specific examples of how they were worth more at one time and now they're not worth as much. Right. Okay, then my other question is, uh, in your budget presentation here, you determine the tax levy. Uh, the first question is, uh, Seventy-eight million nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand. I don't know if you can pop that up on the screen or not, but uh, I remember when we voted last spring, we voted on a seventy-two million dollar budget. So I was wondering where that extra f money came from. And then the other question I had was, when you have budget at seventy-eight nine fifty-seven oh three six, and your re receipts are fifty-three million four eighty-four. The tax levy, 25,676,190. When I subtract those numbers, the number is 25,473,036. So where did that come from? Where did that number come from? Right there. Yeah? If you subtract the 53,484 from the 78,957, 
I come up with 25473 not 25676 so is there something that I'm missing here, something that's not well, in? Yeah, uh, well, for, for that, we'd have to go into the, into the actual, uh, uh, does you have the, uh, um, the fur, uh, I mean, uh, the exclusion, that exclusion, that could be, that's 200,000, so I'm not sure that that's it. But uh, you'd have to go, uh, and these numbers are strictly done on the, in the recap, with, which is the yeah. uh, state um, uh, system that we have to enter all our values in. As far as the 78,000, these are done by the town accountant and your, your um, departments, and they put in all the numbers that, are, that come through the, the um, meetings and, and budgets and all that stuff, and that's the number that uh, gets uh, brought in right into it. I, I don't do those numbers. Those, those are the numbers that I have and that I, that I have to work with on this, on these, uh, on this form. That gets brought in right in from, from the town clerk um, when she does her, her numbers from the meeting. And then the, the, bud, the levy itself is done from the state levy, and that's what we added on to. And the revenues are, again, are done on uh, local receipts. They're done also by the, uh, the uh, accountant. She comes up with the revenues, gets an estimate. I will say that your revenues are, are projections are, are very low this year. Which is good. Um, you should be able to meet those revenues, and you won't have a deficit uh, next year. Uh, now, uh, I don't know if you, if I mentioned or if you saw on this one here that you have an excess levy, levy capacity of one million three thirty-seven, which is considerable. Now that doesn't go away; that stays there. So next year, if you run into problems, you'll have that capacity to to raise your, your rates. You won't you won't be going over your your levy limit. You, you won't get into issues where, uh, where I worked before. I actually, I actually said, "Hey, there's no way I can, there's no way I can meet these these numbers. We have to go back. We have to quickly do a town meeting and get numbers cut and budgets cut and everything, which was was cumbersome. But that's where they come from. Okay, thank you. Wish I had a better answer for you, but I didn't do the, I didn't do the budget, the the. You know, or the town meeting, or where they actually come from. Thank you. Council, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, <clears throat> quick question. Yeah. Last year we voted on this when we had Rachel here, and do we have to vote on this again? The open space to vote no on. On your slide, it talks about you voting no. I think last year we voted no. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we had a motion on the table, and we actually voted on that as well. Does that carry forward? Because I'm looking at the agenda this evening. I, maybe I'm missing it. I don't see an open space vote. Well, I mean, you certainly can vote on an open, on an open space. There's, there's a discount that you can apply. I'm not sure that it can be done right at, right at the, um, this um, classification hearing because it has to be done where, where you develop your classes and probably got to go to the Department of Revenue and see which, which way to actually get that. And if the, board, if the council decided that they have something that they would like to do, um, it's probably something that you can get past. But there is no, there is no open space, space class in this community right now. Okay. It's just a class. Right, I understand that. We, we don't want that. We don't have that. But I know, I believe it was last year we actually yes. voted on that. Yeah. Okay. A lot. Do we have to do it again this year? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, you certainly can. A lot of communities don't even don't even discuss no, it when required. they don't have it. Okay. But you certainly can if you want to vote. You know, not to. But since you don't have one, you're taking a vote. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, if we don't have to, I got it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just talking about last year. The other thing, another question I had was, you know, you talk about the split rate and you talk about commercial. What's the percentage that you would look at as an assessor for a town that says like right right now we're 81 percent, 19 percent, correct? Mm -hmm. So where would that 19% have to go to, to, for us to say, you know what, I, I think we need to go to split rate? Quite honestly, for me, in, in doing it in a lot of different communities, and, and I work with Springfield, and they're, they're almost half. Um, but that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, you're not getting into that. But communities that have actually uh, shifted have been mostly those that are in a 30, 30-something 30 percent. Um, that way, it doesn't it doesn't uh, hurt, um, you know, the um, small amount of commercial that you have versus um, a community that has a lot of them. Um, 
so they go up just a slight bit when the regis in a residence get their the discount it's like it's like you know you're taking you're taking money to uh, give residences but yet your commercials i mean it's considerable right. it, you don't have enough as soon as you have enough and you just you're just splitting it let's say you were 50 50 then it wouldn't be so bad but yeah it's it's mostly communities with with cities if you look at uh, you pro um if you go on the data bank there's communities on there that have it and if you look at those they're all like cities that have a considerable amount of, of well, I just say that because every year we talk about it, and sometimes you see 78 percent and 22 percent. It comes, it goes up a percentage or goes down. But I didn't know where you guys would recommend where you would split something like that because, like Webster, Webster just recently got rid of their split rate. Yeah, well, now they're singles. Yeah. What what happens with Webster is probably not, probably doesn't have enough. And what happens is the commercial gets so expensive, your neighbor in town is going to get going to get the the commercial entities to come in because look we're not going to pay double the, uh, the taxes we've got to pay versus this community thank you mr chair council readers um so i have two questions uh so you gave us a graphic with the single ho family home and the single tax rate where the tax rate actually goes down to 1526 but the annual bill is increased at yep. 159. Would that tax bill still increase if you used a different minimum residential factor, like 95.95? Would that still increase? Well, under, the, the to the residences, no, yeah. because the residents now are going to get a, going to get a, a, you know, a reduced tax because the commercial is going to pay for it. Okay. So the taxes would not increase that 159. You might even get that they get. Or like if you went to the to the uh, minimal residential factor, they're saving 500 and something dollars. So take that increase of 159 from the 500 and something. They're only going to increase 300. I mean, uh, they'll have a decrease of 300 and something dollars. Okay. So, in essence, if you sort of kind of went rather than go to one extreme from from one extreme to the other, mm -hmm. if you sort of gradually did a split to. Yeah like 0.95, that would help residents, but it would increase, how much would it increase the commercial? I think, I think the graph I had there might have shown. I just didn't see the actual tax bill. So. Oh, I probably, yeah, I probably didn't go into, um, too far. Well, you can, you can uh, just about uh, do it, like if you were to do 10%, so, in other words, if it's 10 percent of, of the um, taxes that I have done illustrated, it, it would give you somewhat of a picture. Too many slides. Oh, here we go. So here's the minimum residential factors. Uh, so you have uh, 90, uh, 95 and 90. Here's what the rates would be. So you have you have. Uh, um, at nine, at ten percent, for instance, would be uh, you know you have twenty six cent rate. So twenty six rate on uh, on a hundred is two sixty. But to to make it actual and calculate. Um, yeah. See, that's it, it's. Uh, so if you're, if for instance, if you if you did a 25 percent, and you and we have uh, 587 dollars of reduction to the, if you did a 25 percent, obviously they'd get half of that, which would be 270 reduction at 25 percent. And that's for residential. That's for residential. So they'd actually for shifting 25, they'd actually get 250 dollars, let's say. Of a break. Maybe. Of a break. And my other question, thank you. My other question was, um, how do we do um, comparing, and I, and I appreciate that you mentioned Webster, mm -hmm. um, but some of the other towns around us, do they all have a single tax rate or? Any community, like I, like I said, any community with under 20%, I believe all, if, the last time I looked, there was very few communities that split rate, first of all. And uh, any community that has such a loan, they, they just can't afford it. 
Um, what happens is, uh, like I said, you, you, you tax these, these commercial properties and their rents have to go up. The, the, the landlords aren't going to suffer, so their rents have to go up. Now, are they going to get uh, uh, storefronts? They're going to get these, these built up because now they've got to they gotta justify their taxes so their rents go up. Their rents go up, you start to see vacancy. And that's another mechanism of, well, like I explained, to calculate commercial properties. There's a vacancy loss that you put into this calculation, the income to expense uh, ratios and whatnot. That what, if, right now, most, most um, commercial um, appraisals are done at approximately 5%. You go into some areas, it starts to get into 10%, and that's because they're just not getting the, the funds that they need. And by doing that, the actual value of commercial property comes down. So you're kind of you're doing one thing on this side, and then you, you drop in the value. Mm -hmm. it, it, so you have to make it, make it so that it's lucrative and, and worthwhile, and you're not going to lose a lot, of, a lot of commercial industry. Thank you. Any other questions by the councillors? If not, I'd like to open it up to the public. Is there anybody out there that would like to come forth and ask any questions? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a meeting with them. Wait. So you we'll need address? Ah, uh, sorry. Kevin Buxton, 149 Everett Street. Um, I realize, let me first say I realize nothing I say tonight is going to change the outcome of the uh, evaluations. Um, uh, short of me saying tomorrow morning I'll write a check for $78 million, hand it to town manager, um, and nobody pays anything. It's not going to happen. If I did do that, maybe you'd give me the key to the city, maybe even a key to the town hall. <laughs> Points I want to make. Uh, Mr. Marchetti's point of why did the ESS value go up? Why? Because people are selling homes. People are selling homes and they're making profit. Now we can look at the glass half full and say, oh, those people who are making profits are reinvesting in, back into our town. Or we can say, those people are leaving. They're taking their profit. They're going to buy, live someplace else. Uh, <clears throat> The comment made that, well, if we raise the commercial tax rate, rents will go up. Well, if we raise any taxes, that would mean the rents would go up. If we reduced any taxes, does that mean the rents would come down? No. That's a decision made by property owners, landlords. Um, to say that a landlord raises and lowers his rent, no. Just like taxes are always on the climb, you don't have situations where, geez, you know, my taxes went down, I'm going to reduce your rent. But, uh, the uh, other point made that commercial exemption, okay? If a, if a commercial property has, qualifies as less than a million dollars, has 10 or less employees, the landlord gets a break on his taxes. Well, if a landlord has a commercial property and they have 12 employees and he can't get that exemption, wouldn't the landlord ask the tenant, uh, I need you to get rid of two employees. I want to qualify for that exemption. Situation. Like I said, nothing is going to change. Uh, I think we need to understand too, uh, I very rarely talk about taxes. Uh, for the simple fact that uh, people don't like vague comments and suggestions. But the one, one, one series of what we need to understand is if we reduce the residential tax, say 10%, it goes to 0.9, and then let's say we were going to put that 10% right on commercial, it would end up as commercial would be 1.1. All right? 10% is an awful lot. You can reduce the residential tax to 0.9999999. It's still a reduction. So the point I'm making is if you reduce the tax, the residential tax by 1%, it would be 0.99.
it would raise the commercial tax or, or disperse it between the other taxes, it would change them to, well, if we dispersed it to strictly to commercial, it would be 0.01 increase to commercial. Just another thing to consider. Using a 10% fluctuation causes those numbers to fluctuate quite a bit. If we look at a lesser amount, a 1%, or something other than that, uh, something to consider. Uh, I hope to attend more Board of Assessors meetings. I opened up some can of worms today that I'm going to have to probably chew on for the next 12 months. <coughs> uh, but I thank the Council for your time. Thank you. Are there any other citizens that would like to address the hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. I just want to get these before you. I know. That's why I wanted to get them. Hi. Uh, Maureen Doyle, 771 Lebanon Hill Road. Um, I've lived in this town since 1978, okay, and I was a kid then, but being an adult, um, I've heard for a long time, oh, we can't do anything to the businesses. Um, so I'm like, I've heard that a long time, and I've heard, oh, we, we need more businesses, and that will bring the tax rate down. The property taxes keep going up. So I'm like, why not try doing the split rate. I think it's the split rate. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> you know, and also, can't we think of something else um, to, uh, to save some costs? Um, Gus hears me say this all the time. I'm like, there's a real lack of imagination. Like, can't we figure out something to make the property taxes for regular people go down. Um, there's got to be a way to cut costs. I don't, I don't know. I don't know where. But, you know, it just seems like it's like, hey, we'll just raise property taxes. Uh, it can't go on um, like this forever. You just can't keep raising them. And, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know a lot about this or anything about this assessing, but they just uh, raise the value of houses just, it seems, just so they can raise the taxes. I don't know. So my observation is, is just, can't we do something else? And why not try taxing the businesses higher? Um, you know, at least we'll do that. Thank you. Are there any other citizens that would like to speak? Uh, any other councillors? Councillor Shinya. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think when it comes to setting the tax rate, a lot of people misunderstand exactly what, what we're doing here tonight. Uh, we're setting the tax rate to be able to have and figure out what the bill is going to be when we spend. If we want to lower your taxes and your bill to the community, you cut the spending. And uh, I, I think that's what happens, at least some of the comments that I've heard over the weekend with the, with the tax, is that people don't understand that we're setting the tax rate. We're not setting a budget. We're not spending money. We're, we're setting the rate on what that budget is going to be billed on. And I, and I think that's is something important that the people need to understand. Uh, I, I myself was going to support the uh, single uh, tax rate for both commercial and uh, residential. Uh, I, I, I just don't think we have enough commercial uh, business here in town to justify a, a cut, uh, especially this day and age. I, I, I think the time is going to come during the budget when we're going to have to take some hard choices and try to take, save the taxpayers' money through that. But uh, again, for tonight, I'm going to support the uh, single rate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other discussion? <clears throat> I'm just going to make a quick comment as a chair. Um, I've sat through many presentations of the setting of the tax rate. The debate is always the same. Um, there was one presentation that stuck out in my mind I don't know if that was a year or two years ago, where they 
showed a map of designated areas of towns who had a single tax rate or a split tax rate. Uh, as they showed the towns who were in it, who were out of it, uh, and some of them were running away from the split tax rate after they tried it. Uh, it. It was like touching a hot stove. It didn't work for that community, so they went back to the single tax rate. So I've always been supportive of the, uh, the single tax rate, tax rate, but I think uh, Councilor Schoenier brings out a great point. When you talk about taxation, you know, uh, right now because the values are so high, because people are paying so much more for their homes, so they base it off of the comparison in your neighborhood. So a house that was a $200,000 house is a $400,000 house. You see the rate come down, the value go up. It's a balance sheet in the assessor's office. Our board of assessors, they do a great job. I think uh, the presentation tonight exemplifies uh, the same thing as many other presentations I've seen where you do what you think is the best interest of the community. But the bottom line comes down to is when you set this, when people vote for fire stations, renovate town halls, roads, sidewalks, it takes money. And it usually comes out of the tax rate, your snow plowing, your street sweeping. Uh, so services come to play. And these councilors and department heads try to knock the tin on, where's the magic line? If anybody can remember back when two and a half first came in, there wasn't any two and a half. You just raised your taxes to wherever you wanted to go. And then after the state legislation changed, where you only can go two and a half unless you have an override or debt exclusion. So going forward, it's, it's always interesting. And I would like to thank uh, Manny Silver and the Board of Assessors for a job well done in the presentation. And I thank you. If you have any closing statement, feel free. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, th I think I forgot to mention, and I apologize, I'm probably going to fire me now. Um, our, our board is here. Um, we have uh, Diane Kokoska and uh, Michelle Spillane, which is a new member. Um, she stepped up, and, and she's getting the gist of this. And maybe after hearing and, and doing this, she might decide to not run again. But um, <laughs> that's our board. And then Jasmine is our uh, clerk. So they all attended, and we welcome them. Welcome them. Welcome them. Thanks for coming. And yeah, just just to go along with that, um, and as you all know, I'm, I'm selecting and level. We did have a a year which we we looked at it. Um, I was on a selectman at the time, was several years ago. They they shifted 10 percent, only 10 percent. The very next year, we they just had to not uh, not do it and, and shift it back because it was just a nightmare. So. That's just an indication, and if Webster, I, I didn't know, but if Webster has done it, um, again, it's, it's, just, it's just the communities that have quite a considerable amount of, of, of uh, revenues coming in from, from commercial. So with that, I thank you. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank the Board of Assessors. Job well done. If there's no further discussion, I will declare the public hearing closed. We'll take a five-minute break.